Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition and Life Podcast. This is where we look at various nutrition and fitness-related topics through the lens of application. We want to give you practical takeaways so that you can create your healthiest, best self backed by knowledge. Now, on to the episode with your host, Coach Lisa. Hello and welcome back to the Nutrition and Life podcast. My name is Lisa, I am your host, and in today's episode I want to talk about what to do when you hit a weight loss plateau. Before we get into the episode though, welcome back to those of you that are returning listeners and if you are new to the podcast, please don't forget to subscribe, to rate, to review, to share on your social media. It really is the best way to help me grow the podcast. I am still talking to you from Bogota, Colombia, such uh, just like in the previous weeks, but tomorrow I'm actually traveling to Peru just for 10 days, a nice little getaway. I'm going to be doing parts of the Machu Picchu Trail and I will be going into the Amazon as well and I really look forward to ex- exploring some of Peru's amazing culinary experience as well. I am a big fan of ceviche and I've tried some other delicacies such as Kui, which is actually guinea pig <laughs> before, um, but on my list uh, of things to try this time is alpaca, which is kind of like llama and um, supposed to taste like steak. Steak. So we'll see. Anyway, I will um, let you know how my experience goes in the next episode that I record. <laughs> but let's get right into it. So most people start a weight loss journey and they might be going really really well for a few weeks and then suddenly things stop moving and that gets incredibly frustrating and that's when people sometimes throw in the towel when people make the wrong adjustments when people make adjustments too hasty and that's why i really wanted to address this topic because um doing the right thing at this particular time could determine whether you're maintaining your results, whether you are yo-yoing back, whether you are quote-unquote falling off the wagon and so on. So let's make sure you are not one of these people and if you are a coach this could also help you determine whether to make adjustments to your client's macros if you're ever in doubt. So there are going to be three steps that I want uh, to walk you through, uh, essentially questions to ask yourself or ask your, your client if you're a coach. Um, but when we talk about weight, pl- weight loss plateaus, once, what, once again, what do I mean by that? I mean that your weight stalls for at least two weeks. So I hardly ever make any calorie adjustments to people on a weekly basis in a reverse diet perhaps or you know if I've um, I know that person's body very well and I feel confident that that's how they're going to react I might make different kind of changes but in general it often just takes a while for a message to sink through we always think okay I'm adjusting my calories or I eat a certain food and it registers within the body right right away. And so often that really isn't the case. So often we just need to be more consistent with things or patient with things, and then the body's like, okay, well, I'm giving in. (laughs) Um, But sometimes when it comes to weight loss plateaus, we hit them for various reasons. And one of them could also be that your body has registered that general calorie availability is lower, and therefore, as it is so smart and simply wants you to survive, it is down-regulating your metabolism just a little bit. And as I've mentioned in previous episodes, this is not a terrible thing. We used to, people used to talk about a broken metabolism or whatever, but an adapted metabolism or your metabolism adapting throughout a dieting phase and also a a reverse dieting phase is actually very normal and is the most normal thing really if you think about it because again your body is programmed to just get you to survive so it would be silly if it wouldn't adapt to its external circumstances so anyway um nonetheless we shouldn't always suspect that right away or we shouldn't panic um, about that too much because essentially there's nothing we can do about it aside from adjusting our approach. Um, The first question I always, always, always want to ask you, want to ask my clients or um, want you to ask yourself is what has your adherence been like? Meaning if 
out of the seven days, you say you've only been compliant with your nutritional plan for five days and you want to make adjustments, I'm going to question that very much because in order to make any adjustments, most of the time, we really just want to see that consistency. So, you know, you might have been spot on for five days of the week, but then two days of the week you went off of your calories and you probably, or you didn't track at all, or, you know, something was different, your protein was way too low, then I'm going to say, let's work on that first. Most of the time, that really is the most important thing that we really need. Same thing when it comes to accuracy. We often think, oh, well, you know, it's been working so well the first few weeks, just kind of like eyeballing things or maybe not necessarily weighing things out by grams, instead using things like medium apple or whatever. Well, that's not really giving us really the, the best picture that we could possibly have about your calorie intake. And so, so if you have been consistent for the most part, but you haven't been accurate, that should be the second thing to really work on. And again, with regards to the weight loss plateau, we also really want to emphasize that that pertains to the weekly average weight and not necessarily, or definitely not, um, the weight on a day-to-day -day basis because we can't expect your weight to lin linearly go down, particularly if you are a woman, you're going to have more fluctuations throughout the month. So really take things into consideration such such as um, weight to weight or day-to-day -day fluctuations and then just look at the weekly average. However, if you say, okay, adherence-wise, for this first point, I really have been incredibly consistent. Out of all the seven days, I hit my macro targets. I hit my um, my calorie goals. I have been consistent. I have been weighing things out 80-90% of the time and um, my weekly average weight still has the same. Then we can move on to the next, next question that you want to ask yourself, which is pertaining to lifestyle. Perhaps you were sick Perhaps you have more inflammation in your body from things like, even just things like getting a tattoo, having small injuries, being on medication, getting a vaccination, having higher um, training stress, or simply having trained really, really hard, for instance, after a really hard leg day or, you know, one rep max on your deadlift, your weight is probably going to be up the next day. Another point to, pertaining to lifestyle would be, what has your stress been like? Have you been under immense load, loads of emotional stress, mental stress at work? Maybe you have some deadlines. Maybe you really, you really have just been rushing from one thing to another, taking care of your children, your parents, whatever. Stress, 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 which as mentioned in the hormone episode as well, means higher cortisol levels and therefore your body really not being too concerned about weight loss and more just being focused on survival, therefore not letting go of weight, particularly lower belly fat. The third point under lifestyle to ask yourself would be have you been traveling more, maybe sitting in the car more or especially with airplane travel, there is just something about the air pressure that like no joke um i don't know the science behind it to be entirely honest but it just makes you retain more water and the other thing would be have you had more unusual meals unusual meaning for example you normally prepare all your meals at home you don't necessarily add too much sodium too much salt to that but then suddenly during the week because you were traveling you probably um even though it looks like you were very accurate with your macros um, you might have still been consuming more foods higher in sodium, more processed foods, which just leave more room for error. As I mentioned before, also like packaged foods, they are allowed a um, an error when it comes to the calories that they actually contain versus the calories that it says on the package of, I think it's something like 27%. So, you know, if you suddenly go from only eating whole foods to 50% more processed foods, um, there is definitely a chance that you were consuming more calories than you actually thought. And then the fourth step pertaining or fourth question pertaining to lifestyle would be hormonal considerations and um, also sleep. But hormonal considerations, particularly for women, you know, it might be the week leading up to your ovulation and that's why your week has weight has been stagnant or even gone up. You might have had a week of very, very little sleep, which also affects your, your hormones and just in general, once again, your body is more fo focused on survival and so on. So please ask yourself all these questions before you 
decide to do anything and if the answer to any of those was yes actually it's true I've had like big 12 16 hour work days or I've been sitting on an airplane more often um, then work on that first give yourself some patience and and always throughout this process keep reevaluating also if it still is the right time for you to be dieting and we'll um, talk about that more in a little while the third step or third question to ask yourself or your client would be pertaining to diet and exercise. So, of course, the first two were kind of connected to that as well. But more specifically, have you this week, have you um, mostly been, been eating whole foods and roughly the same amount of fiber? I'm saying roughly the same amount of fiber because... Um, especially if you were focusing more on whole foods and you might have like aggressively been increasing your fiber intake, that can actually also lead to higher scale weight simply because you have more, um, I guess, residual food left in your digestive tract than if you eat less fiber, which means you usually have less you know, stool sitting in, in your digestive tract wait, waiting to get out. So that is actually something to consider and not saying that you shouldn't increase fiber. On the contrary, fiber is so great as we talked about in the digestive health episode. But um, overall, it's just something that could have manipulated the scale for, for a little bit. But on the other flip side, as I said, if you suddenly switch from more whole foods to um, more processed foods and so on, that would be something to consider. What was your water intake like as well? So think about that. Um, have you been drinking more or less? Has it been extra hot? All these things could lead to water retention, could lead to just a manipulation of the scale essentially. And then um, in, in, I guess, or connecting to the fiber point here, have your bowel movements been regular? Have you been somewhat constipated? Um, because again, of course, that could mean that you're a bit more backed up and therefore the scale would probably have gone up. <laughs> um, now also with regards to exercise, especially in dieting phases, as I said, our body is very smart and wants to conserve energy. So naturally, we actually stop moving quite as much. We stop wanting to take this, the stairs, we stop fidgeting as much, we stop gesturing as much with our hands, all these things. And while we can't really control th these actions that need that non-exercise activity thermogenesis, we can at least make sure that we still get the same amount of steps in and that we generally don't suddenly go from a standing desk all day to sitting down all day just because we feel like it, which is actually just your metabolism slowing down, right? So ask yourself all these questions. And then once again, if you're like, no, actually, all my food has been staying the same. I weighed out all my foods. I have my the same irregular bowel movements. I have kept my meat the same. Now is the time to consider what adjustments to make. And um, like I said before, sometimes the answer um, might also be to pull out of the calorie deficit. So for instance, if you realize you've been dieting for 20 weeks already and you're now, now plateauing, it could just be your body's way of saying like, hey, I need a break. I need a maintenance break here or even going into a reverse diet and a longer maintenance phase. It could also be a way of your body saying like, hey, um, or you realizing, hey, uh, the next few weeks are actually just going to be even more stressful. And let me think there is also some holidays coming up. So now would probably be the best time to go into a complete diet break. Um, alternatively, if you're like, no, well, mentally I'm still in it. I haven't actually dieted for that long. And so far you may not have been using any refeed days or whatever. You could even just see if a shorter refeed break of uh, normally the literature suggests like two day refeeds is like the minimum and they usually only have uh, actually advantages for adherence purposes and not necessarily quote unquote boosting your metabolism but you could try like a three or four day refeed and uh, maybe even a week and then seeing if the same calories work so to speak again um but 
the more logical or the more, more common uh, steps after this, if you have determined that no, you have been accurate, uh, there was nothing lifestyle wise that should have led to this stagnation, nothing exercise wise, etc., then we have two options because simply you maintaining your weight means that you're probably no longer in a calorie deficit. As I said, your metabolism probably down regulated a little bit. So we need to increase that calorie deficit from the baseline or create a new calorie deficit actually. And um, we can do that just like when we determine our initial calorie or, or weight loss calories, we can do that either by decreasing food intake or by increasing movement or by doing both. Again, here the caution not to go too aggressively. Um, most people might just say like, oh, okay, I'm gonna slay my calories all the way down to like 1100 or whatever, but keep thinking that you might plateau again and you might wanna leave a little bit more in your, in your tool bag. So uh, when it comes to considering what options to go for or what option to go for, Think what is most realistic to you and what you mind the least. <laughs> so most um, people know who they are when it comes to, oh, well, I've, uh, I actually, like, I'm not really that hungry. I'm still at a pretty decent calorie level of 1,700 calories. I don't mind if we cut a little bit more food. Um, other people, they're already eating so, so little. They're already really hungry. And they say, well, I've, I actually have the time. I don't mind doing any additional activity and then uh, other people that say I'd rather do like a little bit of both so it really comes this this part comes down to personal preference and also what sort of time you have available even and in the sense of how big of a deficit to create um, that will very much depend on you as well if you're someone who has gone through weight loss phases before you might know whether you um, need to be a bit more aggressive or also if you if you say you only have like two or four weeks to go before this and that event then I would go a bit more aggressively but if you have a large amount of weight to lose and it's really more about the lifestyle factors and so on then I'd probably start with a small increase of just five to five percent and up to maybe 15 or 20 percent if you want to go really aggressive and most of the time we're going to pull calories just from carbs and and fats or fats that could be a combination again this depends on how low things already are if your fats are already at uh, the absolute minimum let's say 42 grams or whatever for a 130 140 pound female then I'm most likely not going to drop from from fats especially if you're telling me you're someone who's had hormonal issues in the past and so on um Carbs, if you are also trying to build muscle, if you are a very active person, then I'm going to try to keep those as best as I can. But of course, we're going to have to pull calories from somewhere and we're most definitely not going to pull from protein because we want to make sure you're maintaining as much lean body mass as possible. So again, um, probably somewhere between like a 5 to 15% decrease, maybe 20%, but that would be at a push um, in, of calories, usually coming from carbs and or fat. Um, it could be something like pulling, you know, 15 grams of carbs and three or five grams of fats, for instance. This obviously very much depends on your calorie allowance. <laughs> um, now, when it comes to implementing more activity, again, it will depend on your current baseline. If you're currently just working out three times a week and you say you actually have the time for a fourth session and um, that's great or if you're currently only getting 6,000 steps we might just do something like increasing that goal up to 9,000 per day or um, if you re if you have a rower at home if you have a bike at home or so we might just add a little bit of lists of low intensity steady state training and um, that could be perhaps something like two times 40 to 60 minutes, very, very easy going um, so that we're not stressing your body out too much. Or if you're generally not really a stressed person and you have low life stress and so on and you quite enjoy HIIT training, there's also nothing wrong 
implementing that, um, for example, at the end of your workout sessions, three times per week, something like a 10 to 12 or 15 minute um, finisher with a little bit higher intensity. But again, we really want to make sure that we're tailoring this to you. There is no like one size fits all answer here. Of course, if you're already someone who's working out, you know, six days a week, walking 10, 12,000 steps per day, and maybe even including like two times of cardio, two times cardio per week or so, you know, we don't want to push it to a very, very unsustainable live level of like exercising twice a day or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's something to consider. And of course, when it comes to the both approach, um, somewhere in between, we generally do want to find the minimal effective dose. Again, especially if it's a longer weight loss ahead of you. Once, once again, if you know, hey, we're just doing this aggressively for like eight to 12 weeks and then there's the wedding, the vacation, the whatever, or I want to, I don't want to, I simply don't want to diet for longer. That is a good enough reason also. <laughs> um, then, uh, then we might be a bit more aggressive. Um, especially like I mentioned before, especially with people that we have worked with in the past or that know themselves quite well also and say, Hey, I know how my body responds to deficits, uh, then it's a matter of really like communicating or, or kind of assessing, are you a fast or are you a, a someone who responds very quickly, um, but doesn't quote unquote last for long? Excuse my neighbor's dogs here. <laughs> I hope they're not too loud. Um, because I know people, especially people that have had things like HPA excess dysfunction in the past or people that um, have had very stressful lives in the past and that have only just like restored their hormonal and metabolic health, uh, they often need to go more aggressive, but for shorter amounts of time, as opposed to other people that might um, much, much, much prefer very small deficits, but then are able to go for like half a year or, you know, five months or whatever. So Know who you are personality-wise and think about your previous experience with dieting if you have any. Ideally, of course, you don't have any <laughs> because that means your, met your metabolism is probably in the best possible place. Um, but anyway, that those would be the steps to walk through. And then again, we want to, once we have implemented that change, we want to continue to monitor your accuracy, your consistency, your lifestyle, and so on, as well as your weekly average weight. And only if after another two weeks or so, really nothing is moving, um, then we are going to either have to go more aggressive, realize that right now really isn't the time to be dieting. You may, before going into this dieting phase, not have stayed at maintenance for long enough, which is actually often a reason that people plateau very quickly. You know, they... Um, think they go to maintenance for like a month or two and that's plenty before dropping back into a dieting phase when in reality most of the time the longer we can be at maintenance between dieting phases the more likely your body is going to respond better so all things um to keep in mind but generally speaking i think the point of motivation is such a big one because if people put in the work put in the work putting put in the work and don't see the results also on on the scale, excuse me, um, then they're going to lose motivation and throw in the towel. So especially for us as coaches, it's also a little bit of our responsibility to, um, to give people what they want. So if they tell you they want to be a bit more aggressive, even though you think health-wise it might be the best thing to be a bit more moderate, you know, find a middle ground, really communicate here. If you are a client as well, or, you know, someone's considering coaching, please, please, the more open you can communicate with your coach, the better. Tell them, hey, I'm losing motivation. I'm doing everything that I can. It's like week four, I'm being so accurate and you still haven't changed my macros, even though nothing is changing. Why? Like, firstly, always ask why, because they might have a good reason. It might be for the reason of, hey, we're actually just doing body recomposition. Remember, we weren't really that focused on scale weight anyway. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, you know, but like open communication, especially if you know something about yourself that might take a little bit of a longer time for your coach to figure out, tell them. 
the communication, just um, like in any kind of relationship between a coach and a client is incredibly important. <laughs> so anyway, if you enjoyed this sort of step through walkthrough, you can also find a checklist of this on our website um, to download for free. And um, hopefully that might be uh, serving as a good reminder um, what steps to go through before making any unnecessary adjustments or um, hasty adjustments as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any wishes for future topics or any questions pertaining to this as well, please do not hesitate to uh, message me. I would love to hear from you. And th as always, thank you for listening and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, or share the episode on social. Very much appreciated. You can also follow us on Instagram at Nutrition Coaching and Life or head to our website, www.nutritioncoachingandlife.com, where we provide more valuable content. Have a wonderful day. Now go out and work on your best self.